What's going on everybody? This is Tim aka Static Boards, Ryushima. Gonna kind of go over and touch base on a little UV texturing part two and a little bit of substance painter again with how to split up an object for multiple materials. Uh, I've been getting a lot of people asking about okay I understand how to do you know a full ramp of concrete but what if I want to put a face that's purple concrete and then like a red concrete and a blue concrete all on the same object. So we're going to kind of go over how to split up materials on the same object um, to do UV wrapping better. So the first thing we're going to do is bring in a cube and we're going to go ahead and just turn it into a ramp just like we did last time. These aren't the best ideal kind of ramps, by the way, like doing cubes. You can, there's no issue with it. Definitely check your back face culling when you do the ramps because cubes act weird. But I've just been using planes more to make ramps and dragging edges, and I find it's easier to play with stuff later on. I don't know, it's hard to explain. But for our sake right now, we're going to do this. Okay, so normally what we would do is come over here to the Material tab, hit Material, type in Ramp, and then we'd make our material for the ramp. But for this instance, we're going to want to go ahead and go into Edit Mode and click just this face. We'll go to Face Select, click just this face on top. Now we can go to Ramp. Oh, I'm sorry, you, you won't have that. Okay, so now when, you're, when you click this face, you're going to go to New Material. You're going to go to Ramp. Don't mind my period. Uh, I'm putting that because I have a ramp face already, so I don't want it to throw you guys off with a 001. So just name it Ramp Face. Um, we're going to hit a sign while we have just this one face selected. Right-click, UV Project, Smart UV Project. Okay. So now this face is set to this ramp face material, but now you're like, well, I want to change and make this a different color. So you're going to click that. You're going to come up here to this little plus symbol, add a material slot. We'll call this front face and hit assign. So now you just assign the material front face to this front face. So now it just looks like squares obviously right now, but when you go, we'll do the sides too. So let's say we want to do both of these sides the same. Okay. So then we're going to click both like that. Click one, shift, click the other, add another plus, go sidewalls, you know, very label your stuff. So you understand it. Obviously one ramp tutorial, I'll call it sidewalls, front face, ramp face, but you need to be a lot more detailed for your sake. If you have 500 ramp faces, how are you going to know which one's ramp face, you know? So I use alphabets, I use numbers, I use all types of correlations with words and letters to name different stuff in my park if it's getting too much or big. But you really need to stay organized or when you go to textures, you'll just give up because it'll be too confusing. Um, so we got our sidewalls assigned those, boom. We're not going to worry about the bottom. You don't really see the bottom in the map anyways, so we're just going to go ahead and do that. So now we have our four sides broken up how we want it. Ramp face, front face, sidewalls. Okay. So now that we have it broken up, when we go, if we go over here, we click ramp face. Let's go to Google real quick. And let's just type seamless wood texture. Um, we'll just go ahead and grab a piece of wood, nothing crazy. Now, for this, we're not going to do a material and shader, uh, the shader menu like we did for UV like wrapping. We're just going to do the image texture. So we're going to come to base color. We're going to do image texture. You could do materials to every single side. That's not an issue. You could put, you could bring your shader menu up here and do all your shaders and set your materials and everything. But for the sake of tutorial, I'm just gonna use the image texture because it's just simpler. Um, for look though, go for materials if you can because uh, materials are definitely way better than just images off of Google. 
Um, don't forget to come up here and change your viewport shading to material preview so you can see the material you just put on. Now you see we put it to the ramp face and it assigned it to the ramp face. Now if you want to click it, right click it and go to Smart UV Project. And I'm pretty sure we already did that because we were setting it up for Substance too. But uh, you can you go ahead and you're good to go. Like uh, it's already stretched out to the whole thing. But now say you have this selected, you can come up here and make that second window like last time. And say you click this and you put it to UV Editor. Okay, so now this is that place where we can edit how big we want it and stuff. So something you could do is you can select it all and you can scale and you can really get, if you have a seamless texture, you'll never have to worry about seeing like multiple tiles of it. If it's not seamless, then you're going to notice like squares of it when you go bigger. Let me see, like that for instance. You could see it turned into like white squares instead of that nice seamless wood. So just definitely check, play around with your UV edits or wrapping and stuff on the UV editor over here. Um, but now that we got that, we're going to want to click our next, which is our front face. Go ahead and click that. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and change it to an image texture. And we're going to go ahead and go back to Google and... I'll just grab a rando, random image of anything. It really doesn't matter at this point. We're just going for examples. Uh, I think I just put the same one I had up top. <laughs> there we go. So now obviously you can see this one looks all blurred and crap. Right click it, UV, smart UV project, and it's going to stretch that out to your side. Now I've, you can see the pixelation difference in the textures here. This one's really nice. This one looks like crap. Um, you can fix this by messing around with the UV editor like this. Maybe rotate on 90 and get them sideways instead. Go like that with it maybe. I don't know. But some pictures are not going to be great. They're going to be pixelated. They're going to you really need to get high res pictures, high res materials. Uh, like I said, Texture Haven's a really good place. That CCO Textures is a really good place for free textures. Um, but definitely check those out. Now you want to do your sidewalls, so you can select those. You can go over here, go to Open Image Texture, and uh, we'll go ahead and just do something like this. We'll just go with this like blue stucco-ish kind of color. Again, just for our sake here, the tutorial. And bam, I think that looks pretty cool. <laughs> it's not something personally I would make. I mean, I probably would make something like this. I kind of do like clashing colors and woods and stuff. It just looks cool. I don't know. It's not like I'm really going for realism with my parks to the point where, like, I want it to be a mimic of another park. I want it to be custom made in my own park and stuff, so I really don't care. Um, don't let people harp on you about how stuff looks. I mean, take your time. If you want to do this in your first park, go right ahead. If you want to put a red ramp because you just know how to do red, go ahead. Like, who cares if people hate on you? I've seen a lot of people putting out maps and a lot of critics that have a lot to say, but those critics have also never touched a piece of map making and know nothing of what it entails. And I try to drill this into a lot of people. One of the big things you should study up on for Unity, and I can't really help you because I'm still learning it a lot, is the post-processing effects and the sky and fog settings and stuff like that. That's what really brings maps alive, and it's hard to capture that sometimes i mean it's easy to throw fog into a scene but it's hard to make your fog interact with your sky to make your lighting look right you know like there's a lot of aspects to building a map and when you see these good ones come out like famoso playground and the hangout and stuff like that 
those people put in work and I'm talking months and months of work with teams of people helping each other and contributing to like the, it's not easy it's really not I mean I can pull a map out I've done a whole map start to finish textured in under an hour I believe and uh it wasn't worthy of skating like it just wasn't good enough to be skated so you really need to take your time and make it good for you make sure you test over and over you skate stuff you see if it's right size for you even if a ramp's huge and you're like this isn't the scale if you like skating it leave that ramp like make the maps for you don't try to make a map to please the masses and when doing recreations um I feel like they're a little bit easier because you can take a source image and go off of that to make yours. Uh, I feel like for the newer people, some of you guys should try to recreate a smaller park, maybe a park that's like five, six, seven ramps or so, and really try to capture the placements, the scaling, stuff like that. And then when you go to your next park to build your own, you'll explode and you'll just be going crazy with it. And every time you build, you start a new blender and a new file and a new this, it's better every time. And it gets better and better and better. So I hope you guys stick with this. Um, the only other thing I wanted to cover with this was the substance painter thing. So if you do what we did and you break all three of these up, so we're just going to imagine that each of these don't have a material. So we'll just, we'll just get rid of the materials. Okay, so just imagine all three of these. Imagine they're white still. Like we didn't put any materials. So we clicked each one. So you got to click each one. Make sure you have your sides for your side, you know. Make sure they're assigned. Right click them. Make sure they're UV projected. Same with the front face. Same with the top face. Once you have all those projected and split up, go ahead and save this. Bring it over to Substance Painter. When you bring it to Substance Painter, your texture list down here is going to have each of these as a separate piece to texture. Just like you would if you had two or three objects in the scene, how I showed. Same exact process. You just break it up, assign the materials, bring it to substance, and plug in the materials where you want on substance. And then it's all up to you after that. But I hope this helps you guys. It's really early in the morning on Sunday, and I'm kind of tired, so I just got up and I haven't even drinking my coffee. But I really wanted to get this out because I know there's a lot of people asking for a little bit more on texturing. Uh, there is a lot more still, but I'm trying to set it up properly to where it's not all these little videos. It's a decent video, and that's that, you know. So hope you guys enjoyed on the next one. I'll see you later.